Hey guys, it is me, Laura, and today I am going to do a review for you. It's a series by Dr. J. Wiley. This is called Science in the Beginning. This is, I have the first book in the series, and Dr. J. Wiley is the one who wrote the middle school material for um, Apologia Science. So some of you may have heard that name before. Then this is a curriculum that he wrote for the elementary years. And I know Apologia Science has a creation-based elementary science program. For me, it, it wasn't the best fit for our family. So I was still looking and I found this and it is just perfect for us. So the way the series is set up, just to give you a little bit of an overview, um, you study science chronologically based on how science was discovered um, and the way that people found things out. So the first book is all about creation, science in the beginning, and then as he goes through time you learn more about the you know the different things that that were learned so you get your history kind of mixed with your science which is really fun and I especially like that approach um, my oldest loves history and so I think it'll be a really good way to look at science and I like to look at science kind of in line with real life not just a bunch of facts and uh, vocabulary words so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this camera around and show you a little bit about uh, what this book looks like and how the program is set up Okay, so this is science at the beginning. Like I said, it's for elementary students. So about grades K through four or five-ish, depending on where you break off. And if you open it up, um, in the beginning, it just has a bunch of notes. Um, um, but this is pages of all the supplies that you will need for all of the experiments. And it's broken down by day of creation, which is a unit. So if you wanna have all of the, the supplies ready ahead of time, you can do that and pull that out so that it's ready for you. And then as you can see, um, it goes through the days of creation. So the first day you're gonna be focusing a lot about light and color. The second day you'll be talking about solids and liquids and water and um, the way water works and hot air and atmosphere. Um, day three, you talk about land and water, like sea versus fresh water, and all about plants. The fourth day, you learn about the sun and the solar system and all of that wonderfulness. On the fifth day, you learn about classification, different kinds of animals. Um, of course, you're focusing on your birds and your sea animals. On the sixth day, you learn about land animals and people and sense of hearing and smell and vertebrates and legs and no legs and all of that so you can kind of see how it's set up there and then when you go I'm actually going to move ahead to where we've been working the cool thing about it is that you don't technically have to go in order we've been learning a lot about gardening so we jumped ahead to the third day of creation which talks about gardening and land and things like that and that's where we've been working so each um each lesson is pretty short. You can see this is a lesson, um, and they vary in length, but that's approximately a lesson. Every lesson has a science activity. They call it a science experiment. Um, a science experiment to me is something open-ended where you um, wonder about something and you go test it and figure it out. Um, these to me are science activities, which is where you do something. It's like a science demonstration that shows you some particular property of science. So these are not true experiments in the sense of you're testing a hypothesis, but they're teaching you about the concept that you're learning. So every single lesson has a science experiment. So if you don't like science experiments or science demonstrations, this is not the curriculum for you. But if you like those hands-on things, this is it. So what we'll do, and excuse that crying in the background, my children are getting bathed and apparently my youngest is not happy. Um, but. Um, this tells all about what what I'll do is I will read the lesson ahead of time and for my kids they're kindergarten my oldest is kindergarten age um, he doesn't really like it when I read this to him it's still a little bit heavy I think for a fourth grader it might be alright but I recommend depending on your child's um, you know ability and interest to in what they like reading it ahead of time and kind of understanding and then as you're doing the um, the activity with your kids talk about all this stuff and you can have the book close and kind of pull out the vocabulary words and just discuss it and look at it and it can be very informal and fun that way and then at the end 
Um, for the younger kids, which this is what I use with my son, I just read him these questions that they have, the first level one youngest students questions, and we talk about them. And for um, older students, you have write in your notebook what it means for something to decompose. Explain how that relates to humus and how humus relates to soil. And then for the oldest student, they would do the notebook and then they would write in their notebook why they think plants grow better in soil that contains a lot of humus. And so most of these are some kind of notebooking or journaling activity. Every once in a while there will be something a little bit more involved, but generally that's what you have here. And that's it. That is a lesson and they just kind of build on one another. Now this comes with an additional book that has all the answers to the questions, but I really don't know that that's super necessary. Of course, I'm not really using this stuff from the oldest students, so I don't know. But we have found that the experiments are fairly easy. Um, we have had a few that we've had a trouble getting to work, but for the most part they've done really well, and it's clearly user error, like we can tell what we're doing wrong. Um, so we've really, really been enjoying this, and I just love it because a lot of the times, like today, we were working on, let's see if I can find it, oh, here it is. We were working on this where you mix salt water and fresh water and try and see the, the difference between the properties of the two of them. And um, we use, you use colored water so that you can tell the difference between the salt water and the fresh water. And afterwards, my boys just lined up, after we were done talking about it, they lined up a bunch of glasses and we colored different water and they played with different amounts of salt and did all sorts of experiments on their own and to me that's exactly what I want to happen and because this is all in relation to creation it gives us a wonderful talk opportunity to talk about why we think God made it that way what isn't it cool look at the things that God made and the way that he um, made just such an amazing and diverse world for us to explore and it has been just really good for us and I feel like this is laid out pretty well I feel like it's written pretty well it feels a little bit textbooky let me go ahead at the risk of taking a little bit longer here I'm going to read just randomly okay so um, in lesson four you learned about four different kinds of energy radiant energy thermal energy mechanical en energy and chemical en energy you also learned that radiant energy can be changed into thermal energy when light is absorbed by something well, it turns out that God's creation is full of situations in which one form of energy is changed into another. Let's study this amazing process a, a bit more. The first thing I need to do is introduce a better term for this process. I used the word change when I talked about energy going from one form to another, but there's a better way to say it. When one form of energy changes into another form, we say that energy has been converted from one form to another. So when an object absorbs light, the radiant energy is converted into thermal energy. That's why, that's the way I will say it from now on. So anyway, you can kind of see, it's still a little bit textbooky, but it's definitely very kid friendly and I just like to read it and understand and then have conversations with, with the boys and it works really, really well. So I'm super excited about this. If you have not heard about it, you should check it out. It's Dr. Jay Wiley, Science in the Beginning, and it is put out by Brian Builders. And um, if you have any questions about this or anything else you want to see, please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.